Right, so this is your diesel generator, yeah? That's yep. diesel generator. Now, okay. where, the, where the smoke will come out of is here. Right, okay. It's going to come on in about 10 seconds. Right, okay. We've got a view of the sea, so it's not really oh, terrible. Well, now. And a view of it now, so we've got the view and none of the edge <laughs> The idea. <laughs> uh, you can see the kind of pollution that the generator causes uh, when it's on. Roughly every day and a half, it runs for about eight hours, uh, producing that pollution. So any kind of green energy scheme would save the value from that pollution and obviously would benefit us. Diesel's become extremely expensive to run that generator now and that's what we have to rely on. What about Dr. Stone objecting to my fence? Yes. Yeah, he, he said he wants to see it open palings and that sort of makes it easier for people to put their rubbish through and I sort of didn't agree really. This is uh, this is Mr. Holding's offensive fence, <laughs> as seen from the other side. It's a bit more offensive that way, I suppose. It's we, how offensive is the fence, indeed. And how out of context does it look? I don't know. Here we see Colbone Church, and behind that is the residence of Simon. Simon wants to install a hydro scheme with about four and a half kilowatts, which would be seriously useful. Uh, Barry, on the other hand, slightly higher up, who is planning an installation of about 500 watts. Not quite so useful, but still a lot more useful than what he's got at the moment, which is basically nothing. Got a few Calagas bottles there. That's yeah. That's that's the Christmas. Well, they deliver them, but they don't take them away. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yeah. That's for your cooking, presumably, is it? Uh, that's, that's yeah, cooking. And it used to be lighting. Um, like oh, and lighting. Yes, of course. You it used, used to, to be, not any longer. Yes, you used to have the, ga the, the gas lighting yeah. here. But yeah. um, can you tell us something about your gas lights. Oh, well, they're basically condemned. You can't get parts or well, you can't get people to work on them. You yeah. can get them. This is 300 metres of Blue Mains water pipe, which is extremely expensive, uh, which I wouldn't have been able to afford, but as luck would have it, I found it for sale on eBay, which I bought for £100. Uh, three rolls, which each would cost £7,000, I'm told. It, it came from BT. Uh, they were going to put it under Manchester Airport, surplus to needs. So it went to a reclamation yard and was sold off. And I paid about 800 quid getting it down from Lancashire for it. So that's made the whole project possible because uh, I could never have afforded £21,000 for the pipe. This is where a small dam would be built with a small enclosure of several square metres to collect the reservoir of water which would be fed into the four inch pipe which would go down by the side of the stream following the footpath. Uh, as you can see the whole affair is very small and could all be done in local stone and would not look at all out of place. Right, let's just try and get the place, the position in context. There between the trees in the background we can see Colbone Church. Um, hanging around up the hill there 
is the house where Simon lives. So, a small pond effect somewhere here. Yes, yes. Uh, local stone enclosure, probably less than a foot tall. Yeah. Uh, the four inch pipe would be disguised, you wouldn't see it. And so it would divert some of the water into the pipe. Yes, right, okay. That's fine. We're not talking about the River Thames. No, we're not. And all this water will be in the sea in how many minutes? A couple of minutes? A couple of minutes. A couple of minutes it will be in the sea. All that power gone to waste. The footpath that Julie's walking down is the track the pipe will take. The trench will be dug a foot wide and then filled in so it won't be visible to the naked eye. And round about here it'll, it'll, it'll gently curve and then drop down the bank and the, the turbine will be sited next to the stream at the bottom of the coombe there. Uh, this is what will give the four and a half kilowatt capacity, the fact that it's come about 250 odd metres. And there's an old track here we, and we, one of the ideas was to dig, dig out the bank further down so the the two, the two old tracks could be linked together because at the moment they're not. And that would give access for wheeling equipment and what have you down here and access for servicing the, the turbine in future years. The turbine itself is, is tiny. We're talking a six inch wheel enclosed in a metre square cabin, which you won't even be able to see from up here. Uh, on land that's of no other use and would otherwise be classified as dangerous. I think maybe we need a Exmoor National Park Planning Committee site visit down here. I know that's already taken place about three years ago. They had a kind of office day out and about ten people came down and they saw the site. Uh, the Tim Cookson the, the, was very enthusiastic. Everybody was enthusiastic actually. And uh, this is when they said um, returns for not, not allowing the mains to come into the valley that we'd only have to pay a pep peppercorn rent uh, for the whole facility. Uh, of course that's all changed now uh, as the administration in the last three years has completely changed and uh, the current uh, people seem to have pound signs in their eyes. Nothing.